Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends. Today is part two of our six part set review for Modern Masters 2015. Yesterday, if you joined us, we looked at all the white cards in the set. Today, we'll be looking at all the blue cards. And over the course of the next four days, we'll look at the rest of the color combinations. And then on the last day, we'll look at multicolor and colorless cards. So we got a lot of things to look at. So let's just jump right in. And the first one is Ether Snipe. So for six mana, you get a four four creature that can bounce any non-land permanent to its owner's hand. This this card has always been a house and limited. This is just an awesome limited card. And on top of it, if you can't get the six mana, you can play it for the evoke cost and still get the bounce effect out of it. And on top of all that, if you need more, it's also an elemental, which does matter with certain cards in this set. So this is going to be phenomenal and limited. You know, obviously not a card that needed a reprint for the actual modern format or anything, but I think what you'll notice is a lot of these common and uncommon cards are here because they're going to help propel the limited game and make this a fun draft environment as opposed to cards that need to be reprinted for modern itself or because they have a really high price tag or anything like that. I think the rares and mythic rares are kind of more for, for that function. So, having said that, let's go to the next card, and it is Air Servant. If you've ever played this card in Limited, you know that it can take over certain games. When you pay 5 for a 4-3 flyer, that's real good. And then the ability for it to tap down any of its potential blockers is phenomenal, and it can also defend itself. You can use the ability when he's tapped. It doesn't tap to activate the ability. Just a really fine card all around. Very aggressive card. Argent Sphinx, and here's another almost very similar card to the last one we looked at. It's 4-4-4-3, four, 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 which is very aggressively costed. And on top of that, if you have Metal Craft, you can pay a blue to kind of blank it and save it, which is kind of awesome. So this is a really strong card in Limited. You will find, if you watched the set review yesterday in white, there was a lot of synergies between white and artifacts and metalcraft. You're going to see the same thing here in blue. There's a lot of blue and artifact synergies with metalcraft and affinity. So there is going to be a blue artifact draftable deck out there as well, which is pretty cool. Next is Cloud Elemental, and this is a real good aggressive card. Costs three for a two-three flyer. It's an elemental as well, so that I'll point that out. And it can just get some damage across pretty quick. Now, its drawback is it can only block creatures with flying, but that's fine. Its purpose really isn't to block. This guy's purpose really is to get in there with some early damage. Cryptic Command. So this is one of the big four that was printed in the original Modern Masters and then reprinted again here. And these are the cards Dark Confidant, Tarmogoyf, Cryptic Command, and Click. Those were kind of the big four of the last set. They're all back again. But let's look at Cryptic Command. If you've never played with this card, you might not realize what a blowout this is. It, when you first look at it, you think, wow, three blue, that might be hard to do, especially in limited. But you're going to work hard to make that work because it can just simply win you a game. I remember playing the Lorwyn pre-release and I got this card and I was not sure if I was even going to run it because I was like, wow, can I get it out for three blue? And then I'm like, well, it's a counter spell. Yeah, I'm going to run it. And it, it wins you games. Is Choose two, you know, you get the ability to counter spells, draw cards, tap all your opponent's creatures. A lot of times that's just the win right there. Uh, you got the bounce possibility. It's just so versatile. This card is just incredible. And it really desperately needed a reprint considering how expensive it was really still, even after the last reprint. <laughs> Fairy Mechanist, and here's another one of the kind of Artifact Matters cards. This one is an artifact itself for, for a choo-choo flyer, which is eh, okay, but you get a pretty nice perk out of the fact that you can kind of dig and pull another artifact out and draw it to your hand. So very good card, especially with the artifact theme. Flash Freeze, and I mentioned in the white set review, we see some of these color hosing cards from the past come back, and much like what they did in Dragons of Tarkir, where they got a lot of really aggressively costed color hosers, this was the original cycle of aggressively costed color hosers. Obviously, this is going to start in your sideboard, but... If you're playing against red or green, it's very valuable. It's a really fine card. Some of these do make it into modern and sideboards. You do see them occasionally in certain decks. This one's good for hosing, obviously, burns, burn decks and really aggressive red decks, as well as some green strategies like Infect. Guile. And here's another card. You look at the casting cost, much like Cryptic Command, you're like, oh, man, three blue. But if you get this guy out, sometimes it's just game. He... 
is almost unblockable. I mean, he's 6'6", six, six, and he can only be blocked by three or more creatures, which is a very nice perk. And on top of that, if you counter anything your opponent tries to play, you have the ability to actually play it yourself for free. Uh, it's crazy. So it's an awesome card. It's just a house. Honestly, I don't know if there's any modern decks that I can think of offhand that use it. If someone thinks of one, let me know. But, you know, this is probably more of a limited card and just an interesting kind of fun inclusion. Helium Squirter. And this is the first time we're seeing the Graft mechanic back again. And Graft is very cool. And what you're going to see here pretty soon is another mechanic that is back is pro Proliferate. So these were two mechanics that were not in the same block together. Uh, Graft was from the original Ravnica. Proliferate was from Scars of Meriden. But you bring these two together and they have some incredible synergies. So if you're going to draft that deck or try to build that deck, well, this is going to be a real nice card for you. It's a common slot. It costs five. It has Graft three. And it also has the ability to give cards with counters flying, which is pretty awesome. Next card is Hercules Recall, and I was a little surprised to see this reprinted just because it, I always think of this as an older Magic card, but it, of course, did get a reprinting in one of the early core sets, so it was, of course, modern legal, but I was kind of like, where does this really fit? And I don't know, in the limited game, unless I'm missing something, this just seems to be maybe an artifact hosing card. Obviously, when you play this in constructed or eternal formats, especially once you start looking at legacy and stuff like that, this is a storm card. Uh, activation card usually where you get to return all your zero casting cost artifacts to your hand play them again get your storm count up that type of stuff now there is no storm in this set uh, there was some storm in the original modern master so when i saw this card i thought oh maybe they're going to try to do a sub storm theme but uh, they didn't so it's good it's got a reprint it's definitely a fun card it gets some more out there in people's hands maybe they can experiment with some uh, constructed decks with this one probably more than likely just a sideboard card or a way to protect maybe some of your artifacts, uh, but it's a little bit niche and limited. Inexorable Tide, and here is an enchantment that allows you to basically continually proliferate as long as it doesn't get destroyed and you can ca keep casting spells. Again, this is gonna be really cool with Graft. On its own, it's not great, but you can, this is just a build around me rare or a nice little supplement rare to your already existing graph slash proliferate deck so it's it has a home obviously in limited mana leak so always happy to see mana leak back again it gets reprinted every few years and it's probably good that it does so it doesn't creep up into uh, too pricey of a range it is a common it's always been a common every time it's been reprinted so it's not a very valuable card but this card, if it didn't get printed every once in a while, you know, it could, could go up a few bucks, so it's good to see. And if you've ever played with it before, you know how good it is. It's awesome. The only drawback to it is sometimes in the late game it becomes a dead card when you draw, you top deck this and, you know, you and your opponent each have like 12 of your lands out. <laughs> it doesn't always feel good. However, there's some pretty mana heavy cards in this set. So even in late game, if someone tries to pull an Adrazi out or something, this would be a nice little trump card to that. So Mana Leak's awesome. It's definitely used in modern. It's phenomenal cards. You'll be happy to use it in limited as well. Mull Drifter. Here's another really phenomenal card in both constructed and limited, maybe more so limited, but for five, you get a two, two flyer and you get to draw two cards. Or if you can't get to five, you can play the Evo cost for three and maybe draw into some of the lands you need. Mall Drifter is just awesome. Can't say enough good stuff about it. Narcolepsy, and this is kind of quote unquote blue removal. But one thing to remember about this card, this is a little unusual from a rules point of view if you look closely at the at the text here. At the beginning of each upkeep, if enchanted creature is untapped, tap it. So it actually does if you put this on a creature, it doesn't tap right away. So it stays untapped if it's untapped. And then when you get to the untap step, the creature actually does untap, and then at the un upkeep it taps again. So if you put this on your opponent's creature that has a activated ability, for example, that uh, needs it to tap, your opponent could potentially still use that on the untap step before it gets to upkeep. So just be mindful of that. It's just a kind of simple thing a lot of times people miss with this card. Novagen Sages. And here's another graph card. This is pretty big graph card. You get a 4-4 four, four for 6, and you have the ability to remove some of the counters among 
not just this creature, but any creature you control to draw cards. So it's a pretty nice sized creature and a draw, draw card drawing engine, especially if you maybe have some creatures that the counters really aren't doing much for at the time. Or again, with a proliferate strategy, this becomes a lot better. So it's just here to fit into that deck. Humilox. And you look at the casting costs, guy seems expensive. He's, wow, he's 8 for a 5 4 flyer, but look a little closer. He's got Infinity for artifacts. So he can get cheap pretty fast in the right deck. <laughs> so Infinity for art artifacts. If you haven't really played with Infinity before, let me tell you, it can get out of control fast. And there's Infinity decks that are valid in Vintage, Legacy, Modern. And even in limited, you can make this work to your advantage. It's just a very, very powerful mechanic. And you can get this guy down to a reasonable price very fast and have a 5 4 flyer. Remand, another great classically uncommon card that's very good to see reprinted. This thing, it just seems like no matter how much it gets reprinted, it just still kind of struggles with keeping its price in a fair range. And. It's a great card. It's used a lot in modern. It's kind of it, it is a counter spell, but you have to think of it more of as, as a temple card because it just kind of sends the card back to the player's hand, not to their graveyard. But you do get to draw a card off it as well, so it's a great tempo card. Uh, really fine, really fine reprint here. Repeal. This is a very powerful card, and don't underestimate how powerful this thing is. The fact that you can, as long as you have the mana, basically return any non-land permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card off it is pretty awesome so not only is this helping you get tempo plays off your opponents but also if you want to save something of your own you can do it at instant speed if you want to return something to your hand play it again to get an entrance the battlefield effect it just can do so much and as a matter of fact it's so powerful it sees a lot of vintage play in fact lsv if you watched uh, vintage super league i don't know how many of y'all watch that? Um, I, I love watching Vintage Super League, but I think every single one or almost every single one of his Vintage decks had repeals in it, and he was using them left and right for all different effects. Now, granted, <laughs> that environment's a lot different than Limited in Modern Masters, so it's probably not going to be quite as, as warping here, but it's still going to be very useful. It's a very good card. Somber Hoverguard, and here's another Affinity for Artifact cards. When you look at the casting cost, seems over, overpriced. Okay, six for a 3-2 flyer, but those artifacts start coming out, and there's things like artifact lands that are going to count as artifacts and stuff like that. This thing will come out a lot quicker than you think it will. Steady Progress, and here's just an instant that will let you proliferate, and because of that, it kind of is a quasi combat trick and it's going to let you draw a card as well so this is a really fine card it's going to go into that graph slash proliferate deck stoic rebuttal i really liked this card back when it originally came out with basically it's a cancel but if you have three artifacts it's a counter spell and counter spell is awesome so uh, if you're playing metalcraft play it and it's hard to say cancel is better in some limited formats than others for example I've played limited formats where cancel is basically an auto include, but then uh, the previous one, Dragons of Tarkir, Cons of Tarkir, I honestly never even play cancel. It's just too slow. So I don't know. Here, I think it will probably be okay, but it's hard to say until you actually get a chance to play the deck. Now, if you're playing Metalcraft and you're able to counter spells for two mana, then yeah, absolutely, it's an auto include. Sarakar Spellblade. This guy's interesting. He's at the rare slot. I don't know if I love this guy, and this may be one of the first cards that, because basically this is Modern Masters, folks, so pretty much all these cards are amazing and limited, if nothing else. Uh, this is the first one where I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. Um, so, so basically, for three, you're getting a 2-1. If it was unblockable or something, maybe I'd be on board with this one. But whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can put a charge counter on it. Now, it is a charge counter and not a plus one, plus one counter, so keep that in mind. And then when he deals combat damage, you do get to draw cards based on the number of counters. I just feel like this guy's going to have a hard time getting across, especially considering he costs three to drop. By this point, your opponent's probably got some defenders, or at the very least, some removal to get rid of this guy. 
So I don't know. Not to say I wouldn't play him, but I just feel like there's just so many better cards in this set that this I don't really see him always making the cut. And it's just interesting. He's at the rare. I'm sure it's because of the card draw, and there may be some way to exploit him. I'm not thinking about, but I don't know. Just doesn't really excite me too much. Telling time. So before I talk about telling time, let me just say I was a little surprised Serum Visions didn't get the call to be reprinted. Serum Visions was a common in the Meriden block, and it's a huge staple in modern, and it's very expensive for a common <laughs> today. So I was really expecting to see it reprinted. Now, having said that, it's the type of card you could easily reprint in a dual deck, or you could reprint it in the Commander series this you know this year if you want to. So it's not like it can't come back somewhere else, and it's not you could even reprint it in a standard you know, set. It's not going to warp the format or anything like that. But I was a little surprised we saw Telling Time instead of instead of Serum Visions. But having said that, this is going to be a good limited card for you, and it does see a little bit of play in decks that need Dig in Modern. Tesseret the Seeker. So he's going to obviously go along with your artifact strategy, and he's powerful. I mean, he gets Vintage, or really Legacy more play. And yeah, he does get some Modern play as well. In limited, if you're playing that artifact deck and you're lucky enough to open him or get past him, you're going to be very, very happy. The ability to untap artifacts is awesome. The ability to search your library for artifacts and basically put them right into play is awesome. And making all your artifacts 5-5 five, five creatures is awesome. So all three of his abilities are both pretty easy to pay for, for the most part, and are amazing. So incredible card. Tezzeret's Gambit. So this is the Pyrexian mana card for blue, and there seems to be pretty much one Pyrexian mana card in each color, which is cool that we were able to bring that back, and probably a good thing that it doesn't completely take over the set, because first thing I'll say about this card is Pyrexian mana cost means it doesn't need to even be played in a blue deck. So all these Pyrexian cards, you can put them, as long as you're willing to pay the life, you can put them in any deck you build. So that kind of lets you warp the color pie a little bit. And there's just enough of it for it to be fun and limited without kind of really kind of breaking the format or making it, you know, the centerpiece of the format. So I think they did a good job with that. So let's talk about this card specifically. Draw two cards. That's fantastic. And then you also get to proliferate. Even if you're not proliferating, drawing the two cards is just fine, especially if you're doing that for three mana. But when you are, especially in these graph decks, it's that much better. Thoughtcast. Here's another huge card throughout history of Magic. It's seen play. It sees play in Vintage, Legacy, obviously Modern. And it's going to do you very well in Limited as well. Even if you're paying five to draw two cards, that's not horrible. And if you have any artifacts at all making this cheaper, it's awesome. So another really fine card, really good inclusion. Bird. This is kind of a cheap little flyer that's going to go in that, that Graft Proliferate deck, and eh, not too much more to say about him. He's there for that reason. Vapor Snag. This is awesome. This card, if you've ever played with it in Limited, and it has seen Constructed play as well, obviously, it's just very powerful. You get to return target creature to its owner's hand at instant speed, and the one life, okay, that's fine, you know, but you're only paying one blue for this. This is just awesome. And it's at the common level, so expect to see a lot of this floating around your limited games. Vendillion Click. So this is much like Cryptic Command that we talked about earlier, part of kind of the big four from the last set that are back again. And this is Mythic Rare. This card just... I don't know, just was out of control in value. I think it was up around like 100 bucks at one point, and then it got reprinted in Modern Masters, and it settled down a little bit. When I say a little bit, like 70 bucks. <laughs> uh, so it's good to see another reprint of this. You know, hopefully there'll be enough product out there to get the price of this card down a little bit. It's also got new art, and it's also the art that you see here in the background. Uh, but this thing is obviously Modern Staple. I, mean, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> um, and it's going to be great in Limited as well. So you'll be more than happy to play this in Limited. It gives you, at instant speed, it gives you a 3-1 flyer. It gives you the ability to look at your opponent's hand and then take their worst card and have them replace it. Or, I'm sorry, take their best card and have them replace it. Or you can look at your own hand and take your worst card and replace it. So it's just phenomenal. Vigian Graph Mage, and he's for your graph deck, 
and eh, not too much more to say about him. He does let you untap creatures with plus one plus one counters relatively cheaply, so that's kind of nice. It almost gives you quasi vigilance and maybe can be used as a combat trick if your opponent's not paying attention. Uh, but very good card for that deck, but that's why he's there. Water Servant, and this is an okay card. It's an elemental, so you want to keep that in mind, but cost four for a three four, that's decent. Uh, doesn't really have an evasion. That's the only thing I would say there's a strike against this guy. But you can pump his power at the cost of his toughness or vice versa. So he can be a really good blocker if you need him to be. Not going to make the cut probably in all your limited decks here in Modern Masters just because there's so much power here. Uh, but he's not a bad guy. And our last card for the day is Wings of Velis Vel. And he's a changeling, so you do want to pay attention to that because that does matter. There are some times when different tribal elements will matter. He's also a tribal instant. And basically until end of turn, target creature is base power and toughness 4-4 and gains all creature types and flying. So there are going to be moments where that's going to matter, but then there's going to be probably more moments where it's just going to be good to have a 4-4 flyer and just get across some damage. Or use this as a combat trick to block and destroy one of your opponent's creatures. Very reasonably costed a two, and it is a common, so you're going to see quite a bit of it out there in the limited world. So, having said that, that does conclude our review for all the blue cards in Modern Masters 2015. Tomorrow we'll be back with the black cards in the set, and we'll review those. And like I said, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, definitely a good time to do so. We'll be coming back every day with another color, and the last day we'll look at the remainder of the cards in the set. So, as always, hey, thanks for watching, and have a great day.